Chapter 12 Reproduction in Plants Parts of a flowering plant Most plants have roots, stems and leaves. These are called the vegetative parts of the plant. Flowers are the reproductive parts of a plant. The male part produces male gametes whereas the female part of the flower produces female gametes. Methods of reproduction in plants Asexual reproduction in plants The production of new plants from a single parent without the involvement of gametes is called asexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, new plants are obtained from single parent without production of seeds. Sexual reproduction in plants the production of new plants from the existing parents by the fusion of their gametes is called sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, new plants are obtained from existing plants through seeds. Asexual reproduction in plants. The asexual reproduction in plants can take place by the following methods. Vegetative propagation, budding, fragmentation, spore formation. Vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation is a type of asexual reproduction in which new plants are produced from roots, stems, leaves and buds. Since production is through the vegetative parts of the plant, it is known as vegetative propagation. Stem tuber. The underground stem of potato is called a stem tuber. A tuber is the swollen underground stem of a plant which has stored food. It has buds called eyes. New potato plant growing from eyes of potato tuber. Shoots. Eye. Stem bulbs. Underground stems of onion, tulip and lily are called bulbs. They are thick, short, underground stems which contain abundant reserve food. Rhizome. Underground stems of ginger, turmeric are called rhizome. Rhizome of ginger. Subaerial stems. In some plants, branches growing from the base of the stem creep along the ground or just below the ground. Grasses, strawberry plant, mint plant grow in this manner in natural condition. Vegetative propagation by roots. Certain plants have tuberous roots which are swollen due to the storage of food. A new sweet potato plant grows from each bud on the old sweet potato. New plant growing from bud. Sweet potato root tuber. Vegetative propagation by leaves. The leaves of plants like bryophyllum and Begonia produce buds on the notches in their margins. Budding In budding, a small bulb-like projection called a bud comes out from the parent plant. The bud gradually grows and gets detached from the parent cell and forms a new plant. Fragmentation This process of reproduction is called fragmentation. The breaking up of the body of a plant into two or more fragments where each fragment grows and matures to form a new plant is called fragmentation. Spore formation. Fungus plant called bread mold grows from spores which are almost present in the air around us. This bread mold when observed under the magnifying glass consists of thread-like projections called hyphae. It has a knob-like structure called sporangium at the top of erect hyphae called sporangiophore. Each sporangium contains hundreds of minute spores enclosed in it. These spores are in the cluster of sporangia called sori on the underside of their leaves. Reproduction through spore formation in fern. Sorry, 
cluster of sporangia containing spores. Frond leaf. Sexual reproduction in plants. The plants that have flowers are called flowering plants. Stamen. Male reproductive organ of a plant. Here, anther has been cut open to show pollen grains inside it. Pollen grains. Anther. Stamen. Filament. Pistil. Pistil is the female reproductive organ of the plant. It is made of three parts, stigma, style and ovary. Unisexual and bisexual flowers. The flowers which contain only one reproductive organ, either only the pistil or only the stamens, are called unisexual flowers. The flowers which contain both reproductive organs, pistil, as well as stamens are called bisexual flowers. Pollination The transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a flower is called pollination. Self-pollination and cross-pollination Self-pollination When the pollen grains from the anther of a flower are transferred to the stigma of the same flower or another flower on the same plant. It is called self-pollination. Cross-pollination. When the pollen grains from the anther of a flower of one plant are transferred to the stigma of a flower of another plant of the same kind. It is called cross-pollination. Fertilization. Pollen tube penetrates the stigma, passes through the style and enters into the ovule. The male gamete moves down to the ovule through the pollen tube. The top of pollen tube bursts open and male gamete comes out of the pollen tube. The male gamete fuses with the female gamete present in ovule to form a fertilized egg cell called zygote. The fusion of male gamete with the female gamete to produce zygote is called fertilization. Dispersal of seeds. The scattering of seeds over a large area away from the mother plant by the agents of dispersal is called dispersal of seeds. Dispersal of seeds and fruits by wind. Certain seeds have developed several adaptive features which help them to be dispersed by the wind. Seeds of drumstick plant and maple plant. Seeds of cotton, caltropis, dandelion, madar and fruits of sunflower have hair around them which allow them to be dispersed easily by the wind. Seeds of grasses, orchids and begonia have very small and light weighted seeds which can easily be blown away by the wind and dispersed. Dispersal of seeds and fruits by water. The coconut fruits have a thick fibrous outer coat which enables them to float in water and be carried away by flowing water to far off places. The seeds of water lily plant and lotus plant have a spongy outer coat which allows them to float in water and move to other places along with the water current. Dispersal of seeds and fruits by animals. Some fruits develop hooks on their surface by which they get attached to the fur of animals and carried away to distant places before they are rubbed off from their bodies and fall to the ground. The fruits of Gokru Xanthium and Urina are dispersed by animals due to their hooked surface. Sometimes animals eat seeds along with the fruits. These seeds remain undigested and pass out with feces at some other distant place. Dispersal of seeds by an explosive mechanism. Dispersal of seeds in plants like balsam castor, pea and geranium. 
take place by explosion of their fruit.